The sky was invented in 1524. But in this video we will be scrutinizing the local atmospheric phenomenon known as Project Ozone 3. A sky block mod pack with over 200 mods and 3 different levels of difficulty, with the final difficulty being fatuously nonsensical, taking one year to complete for the professional individual known as hypnotized. The humorous plot twist is that rather than being actual skyblock, it is more like visiting 30 different dimensions to harvest resources from these 200 different mods, with nothing to do with the original skyblock. This is rather similar to Hypixel Skyblock, but much more egregious with the final difficulty, aka Kappa Mode. Anyways it is time to perceive what I can accomplish in Project Ozone 3 Kappa Mode. It all begins on a relatively normal island, except with no lava, and with several pieces of information being forced upon me. But none of them were important except for a quest book explaining the 20 different chapters of Project Ozone 3. Ranging from beating the dragon in the beginning, to exploring the universe, to making preposterously expensive items, achieving the Nobel Prize of Gaming. But it all begins, with the first quest, which gave me a sapling in return for left clicking. As for cobblestone they made me use a more painful way instead of a cobblestone generator which is shift right clicking dirt for pebbles which is 25% of one cobblestone. But I made a stupefying disclosure. There is no speed limit to getting pebbles. So by auto clicking dirt, this became several orders of magnitude overpowered it in a cobblestone generator. With infinite cobblestone to be found in a single dirt block. Anyways it was time to observe the other resources of this island. Such as water and roots below the island. I repurposed the dirt to renovate the sky island into a platform to grow more trees at once. But while I was harvesting juicy pasturages from these trees, I noticed that the island water supply was spilling out onto the void and had squids spawning in the waterfall. And free squids, means free resources. So I launched a federal investigation into the squids. I manufactured a platform below the squid spawning Y level, which will be used to catch the decapodiforms and suffocate them for ink and scrumptious seafood. But instead of getting my delectable seafood, I got loot bags for some reason. Because as it turns out any entity in this game can drop loot bags, which carry multitudinous consumer products. Which turned out to be even better than seafood and ink because they donated foods such as Domino's pizza and s'more ingots, which were far more nutrimental than measly seafood. Notable mention. Mob loot that didn't even come from squids. But for now the surprisingly overpowered squid loot bag farm was overrun by hostile mobs at night, including some guardians and skeletons that sniped me into the void. But it didn't even matter because Project Ozone 3 came with a graveyard mod that stored all my items in a grave, which defied the unending expanse of the void. I bring a dirt block with me as a portable infinite cobblestone source, which I used to expand the squid containment area for easier loot bag accumulation. After going through tens of loot bags I acquired overpowered fishing rods and gaming enhancement scrolls. However this fishing rod was useless since it only caught in substantial accoutrements. So I looked to these gaming scrolls. Which transformed me from a player into a gamer, giving me hacked client reach for 10 minutes. But I would be dethroned and robbed of my powers after being killed in action at night again. Anyways that is enough messing around with the squid farm. Because I have three main goals for now. Unlocking my first machine, reaching the end, and conquering the hunting dimension. The preposterous amounts of squid loot bags will assist me in this. Rather than using this painfully slow process of getting 10 obsidian for a nether portal, I was donated everything I needed by squid loot bags. But the flint and steel needed steel instead of iron which was rather disastrous to manufacture. So I will use yet another vacuous strategy to traverse the nether. I obtained the overpowered tool known as the stone hammer which can transmutate cobblestone into gravel, sand, and dust. I also kidnapped silkworms from my various trees, which I can use to integrate into tree society to infect everything and re-kidnap everything for string, to be woven into string meshes. Now for the real genius part of the plan. 
Combining cobblestone gives compressed stuff which can still be crushed by hammers to give compressed gravel, nine times more efficient than manually crushing normal gravel. This can then be mass filtered through my meshes to mass produce various ore pieces to be smelted into delicious ingots. Notable mention. Slightly edible rock candy from gravel. Crushed stone can also be mixed with water to prefabricate clay, which can be molded into a crucible and placed over a torch to melt my cobblestone into lava. This lava would then be used to set the nether portal on fire and activate it without the useless flint and steel. It would take a while for the portal to catch on fire so in the meantime I took a business trip to the mob farming area to farm skeletons for arrows so I can achieve yet yet another business trip, to the hunting dimension. But since I had non-existent equipment, farming mobs would prove to be more annoying than usual. After a night of absolute gaming and constantly being assassinated, I walked away with zero arrows, and my surroundings were surrounded with death waypoints. But I realized that this gaming was preventable because I could simply make arrows from flint and nether wood. And since the portal was now lit by the lava, I could get arrows with this new method. With 200 mods it shouldn't be a surprise that the nether was now an absolute mess. It was covered in barely recognizable ores, unprepossessing entities, and world generation that was simply world and generation. This included a donut of slime blocks. Which was actually overpowered because I could steal all the slime and use it to create perhaps my favorite items in all modded existence. The slime sling and slime boots. Superior compared to all lazy forms of transportation. But I was getting distracted. I needed to harvest the ghost wood trees in the nether so I could obtain my arrows, which I performed atomic fusion on with wood to create my hunting dimension portal frames. Anyways it is time for an explanation of what the hunting dimension is. It is a permanent nighttime arena for farming any and all hostile nighttime species. But whoever coded this might have also allowed nightmarish space elevator villages to spawn in low orbit. Whether this was on accident or on purpose doesn't matter. Because I used my slime sling to launch an invasion of the village. But just like what happened to the nether, having 200 mods caused villages to be extra incongruous. Village religion has been replaced by science and the industrial revolution. The engineers have created a warehouse filled with steel tools, which I simply could not resist taking, leaving behind my caveman tools. But down the non-existent street was yet another area of science, this time with scientific research far beyond my comprehension. So I took all of it anyways. Except for the atomic reconstructor, which resisted the boundless human spirit. Just next door was a hipster human who dedicated his entire personality to fruit jam. There was nothing else to his name. Only Plabal and Homko and Chapsy and Homki jam. Finally at the edge of the village was a man who was contemplating jumping, but it was time to leave because I was bored. The last things I took were the engineer's hammer and some beet roots, which I will need for my new plan, which was the overly complicated process to get a cake. Since end portals do not exist in Skyblock, the end is only reached through consuming an ender eye cake. Since chickens and cows are not real yet in Project Ozone 3, cake is now made with watered down low fat low calorie versions of egg and milk, made from soy. But the real expensive part was that this needed machines. Due to me playing on Kappa mode everything is 9 centillion times more exorbitant to make. But instead of doing hours of smashing and filtering stone for everything, I could simply travel to other dimensions for resources in this Skyblock mod pack. Because the nether gave all the ores I needed, replacing the need to play Skyblock. The only issue is that each vein has at least one fake ore that explodes on contact, because random is apparently funny. But the issue with the issue is that it was not dangerous enough to be an issue. And I simply recovered by chugging several pounds of candy. However were also overly realistic spiders in the nether so I decided to leave while I still could. Anyways it is time to create something more powerful than the furnace. By mixing clay with the crushed bones of my haters I could create porcelain thingies, which will form the tinker smeltery when put together. This is a stepping stone to the smeltery 2.0, which is supposed to be created using seared stone from melting overly complicated ground. But the quest book has been lying to the public. Because I could just melt compressed stone. So you know what that means. 
After fueling the smeltery with lava and making an ingot cast, I began pouring out all the melted stone. Then I left click mindlessly for what felt like 5 Mesoamerican law counts, until I got enough thingies to upgrade the smeltery to the smeltery but black. Which could also turn one ore into two ingots. On top of that the nether ores can be smelted into two normal ores of the same type. So if we do the analytical geometry that means 4 ingots per funny nether ore. In the end I had all the metal I needed to create the machines to make my end cake. Which will take 5 octillion steps. These steps weren't really worth mentioning because they were all just glorified slightly different versions of mindless left clicking, ranging from left clicking to build an alloy furnace, left clicking this fidget spinner to create shiny rocks, left clicking to smash ingots into plates, and left clicking these random items together to create my precious machines. These recipes do not even make sense. They are just hard because random is apparently funny. Anyways since all of these energy sources are also annoying to obtain, I will resort to the worst but cheapest power source. The tier 1 solar panel. Which is made from combining some glass and wood. The final thing I needed for the cake was the market, made by fusing together even more wood. By placing this down I can summon a man to fall out of the fourth dimension. This allows me to buy whatever natural items I needed in return for random acts of kindness, which are gifts obtained from completing quests in the quest book. But since I kept getting them for doing random stuff that was apparently useful in the quest book, everything on the market was basically free. So I acquired one soy bean seed and grew them to be processed in the machine into soy milk and tofu eggs for the cake. But since the terrible solar panel took 9 galactic years to make enough energy to do this, I decided to go on an expedition while the machine did its thing. In the hunting dimension, not only were there space elevator villages, there were also chance cubes and free food. Chance cubes are a fancy way of saying lucky blocks. And I have decided to open them in case I could get rich from them. Here are the phenomenons that occurred. Zero seconds I realized that these chance cubes were causing more misery than actual technological progress of humanity. The only thing that changed was that all my items were renamed to random stuff. And my machine finally processed the soy assortments for the cake. The final ingredients for the end cake were the eyes of Ender, but the squid loot bags rescued me from getting them the hard way. Finally I could prepare for the dragon fight. I brought a long jam stolen from the hipster. 6 stirred for basically infinite cobblestone as building blocks, my industrial revolution steel tools, Domino's pizza, and 4 kiwi fails lightning bringer. Without further ado it was time to take down the dragon. So I might return to Project Ozone 3 Kappa mode for more gaming. Remember to like subscribe notification bell video comment turn off ad blocker. Reminder that memberships will be disabled on October 10th. But shout out to the current channel members.